Sugar Ray Leonard is regarded as one of the most exciting and fluid fighters of his era. With beautiful footwork, fantastic combinations and devastating knockout power, Leonard has to be one of the most exciting fighters to watch, past or present. Having won world titles in five weight divisions, an Olympic gold and being part of the famous Four Kings, there's no denying that Leonard has to be one of the greatest fighters this sport has seen even if he did have the most retirements and comebacks I can think of. In this boxing style analysis, I'll be taking a closer look at Sugar Ray Leonard's actual fighting abilities, which got him to boxing stardom. But first up, let's take a look at Leonard's background. Born in North Carolina, a young Leonard would soon move to Maryland at a young age. It was here he took up the sport of boxing due to his older brother Roger, who was already boxing at the time encouraging a young Ray to start up boxing. He would enter the amateur system and see much success winning multiple national and golden glove championships. From here he would be noticed and picked up from the US boxing team. Due to Leonard's first name being Ray and his flashy but devastating style in the amateurs, it was only a matter of time before people would start calling him Sugar Ray. Obviously after the man many considered the best boxer of all time, Sugar Ray Robinson. Ray then went on to win gold at the Pan American Games and gold at the Montreal 1976 Olympics, which cemented his legacy. Finished with an incredible amateur record of 165 for 5 and 75 KOs. Due to some personal issues after the Olympics, he had to support his family by turning professional instead of going to college. Once a pro, Leonard competed in the welterweight division where he made a quick and steady rise defeating the likes of Floyd Mayweather Sr and former amateur rival Randy Shields. He would then get his chance against Wilfred Benitez for his first world title in what was a classic between two up and coming stars. Leonard would then go on to have famous back to back fights with another king Roberto Duran where he would lose the first but forced Durant to famously quit in the rematch, which is now famously referred to as No Mass. Sugar Ray then faced the much feared Tommy Hearns, who he knocked out in their classic fight in 1981. Sugar Ray Leonard's famous retirements and comebacks would start to take place in the latter part of his career. The most famous comeback of all was against undisputed middleweight champion Marvin Hagler, which to many is one of the most controversial fights as Leonard won it in a split decision. Leonard would then retire again before winning and taking up the opportunity to win the new WBC super middleweight title and the WBC light heavyweight title against Canadian Donny Lalonde before taking up some other big paydays to fight Hearns and Duran once again. There's no denying Leonard had an eventful career with some brilliant defining moments which fans still cherish to this day. There may be some fans that are split regarding some of the fights throughout his career, but despite what you think, he was an incredibly exciting fighter. Now let's go into detail about how Leonard made his career so successful with his boxing style. Sugar Ray Leonard's Boxing Style Leonard was very much a boxer puncher, where he would mix up being an out puncher gliding around the ring with his footwork before quickly stepping up his attack by looking to counter or use his devastating combination punches to hurt or take out his opponent. In an interview with ABC, they compared him at one point to being the next Ali, asking him how that sat with him. However, his response was interesting as he talked about his influencing styles which made him the fighter he became. He said, It was very flattering and very stimulating. I watched Ali studied Ali, I studied Sugar Ray Robinson, I watched them display showmanship, I watched them use pizzazz, personality and charisma. I took things from them and borrowed things from them because boxing is entertainment. Boxing is a sport but it's also entertainment. I wanted to transcend the sport and be considered not just a fighter or a champion but someone very special. From watching his fights throughout his career, I have to admit I very much see the outfighter movements of Ali and the killer combinations of Ray Robinson adapted into his own style. But most importantly, he wanted to entertain, he understood that. 
This is sometimes, however, may not be a good thing, as we've seen in some of his closer fights or losses. I always thought it was interesting that one of Ray Leonard's biggest inspirations was Bruce Lee, and you can very much tell from watching Leonard that he put into practice the thoughts and teaching of Lee. Here's what Leonard had to say about it. I've told people all over the world that Bruce Lee was one of my idols, uh, mainly because of his, of his mental stability, because of his fighting spirit, because it was more, it was more mental than just physical. For him, it was like what he called emotional content. And for me, that's when I succeeded, when I had to face major obstacles and major opponents like Tommy Hearns, Roberto Duran, Marvin Hagler. Because of my mental stability, I was able to beat those guys. Now it's important to break down each of the individual elements which made Leonard so successful. The lead hand. This was the cornerstone of Ray Leonard's success in the ring, as everything for the most part would come off his jab or lead left hand. He would tend to circle to his left trying to keep the centre ring while throwing quick sharp jabs from different levels. For Leonard, he would have your typical orthodox stance but would change his guard from a higher to lower half guard depending on the opponent's approach. It was so he could throw his jab from below his opponent's vision from a lower angle. This would also allow Leonard to throw multiple quick jabs at once or jab to the body. Ray also had a very strong power jab where he would snap his jab forward alongside with his lead foot to create more power. Another part I loved about Leonard was the way he would use defensive movement to throw the jab before quickly firing back with his own jab to the body or the head or even change it up by using a sneaky slap left hook. You'd even see Leonard doubling, tripling up the left hook, just like Sugar Ray Robinson used to do. The right hand. Now one of Leonard's favourite punches to throw was of course that lead right hand. You will have no doubt seen clips of Ali or Floyd Mayweather throwing this lead hand, waiting to counter the opponent's jab before firing a quick overhand right over the top of it. This of course was a favourite of Leonard's, as it was all about timing this punch against his opponent's jab, as Sugar Ray knew he had the speed to counter them with his own. The Bolo Punch most famously, Ray was also known for throwing the bolo punch, as he would tend to wind up his punch to generate the power at times. This works by using a circular motion performed with one arm to distract an opponent, causing the opponent to either take his eyes off the attacker's other arm or actually focus on the fighter's circling arm. When the opponent concentrates on the hand that is circling, the bolo punch will usually sneak in a punch with the opposite hand when the rival concentrates on the hand that is not moving. He famously did this versus Duran, Hearns and even Hagler. This is a dangerous move as it can leave you open for a counter shot and it just shows you the ability of Sugar Ray he had to pull this off against some of the best fighters that have ever lived. Punch flurries and variation. One of the things I want to address around Leonard was of course the quick, devastating combination punches he would throw out of nowhere sometimes. From watching his fights, I feel Leonard attacked with a vast amount of punches it was more instinctual and from muscle memory from his training than actual specific planned out punch combinations to take them out. For sure now and again, yes, he would put together punches in planned out combinations due to the openings in front of him. But I feel it was more the demon inside him that let those moments take over to really just throw a barrage of punches. Not that I think this is a bad thing, as Leonard would have so much composure and he would mainly wait for his opponent to be hurt first before attacking with these famous flurries. But it was knowing that he could inflict some serious damage by using his unreal speed no doubt gave him the confidence to throw these combinations. Feints and Showboating a great part about Leonard's overall approach was his use of constant feints. Due to his more fluid approach and open stance, he would have to throw feints and use upper body movement to create hesitation from his competitor, 
but he would also use it as a way to create an opening for himself to see how his opponents would react, as they would be very cautious about him unleashing a quick flurry. One thing he loved to do was stepping in with his feet to faint. Quite often many think you can only faint with the upper body, but the fact he would jolt forward with his feet would provide hesitation for his competitor. As discussed before, Leonard also likes to entertain, and showboating was definitely a part of that when in the ring to taunt his opponent. In a way, this can very much throw off someone as it can make you very unpredictable with your next move. His most famous moment of showboating was of course his rematch with Roberto Duran, which was almost shocking at how much this psychologically threw off Duran during the fight, forcing him to eventually quit. However, as much as it gets highlighted, Leonard was very composed in his approach, would only use this in certain occasions in my opinion. Footwork and defense. Now one of the reasons Leonard was so successful was his beautiful and intelligent footwork. This in my opinion was Leonard's first line of defense, especially when he was fighting on the outside. For the most part, he would like to use lots of lateral movement and always move around the ring, never staying in the same place for too long. He would also time his opponent and take small half steps backward before once again moving laterally to reset himself. This made Leonard extremely difficult to tie down for any opponent trying to apply pressure, which only the very best fighters had success against him. However, Leonard could not simply rely on fighting on the outside all the time as he would have to stand his ground from time to time to be able to counter punch and use his very quick combinations to hurt his opponent. From here, at a closer to mid range, he'd be very good at rolling shots with his shoulder and using his lead forearm and elbow to deflect incoming shots, in particular the right hand which we saw him do to perfection against Thomas Hearns in their first encounter. Leonard would also use his backhand to parry away incoming jabs or block hooks because mainly his lead hand would be in a lowered position. He would use his hand to defend against his opponent's lead hand. Finally, Leonard had it all in terms of upper body movement, including rolling the right and even slipping shots, which made him a very elusive target. I also think due to his lowered guard and stance, he was able to have more balance and fluidity with movements to help him dodge punches with great ease. However, as Leonard got older, I do feel his open guard stance let him down, and also just because his speed declined over time, and he would get countered with unnecessary shots, which could have been avoided if he used a higher guard or changed to a more economical style. Killer Instinct to finish off, I want to touch on Leonard's killer finishing instinct when he was in the ring. Outside, Ray seemed like your typical nice, charismatic sports person, but as the fight night drew closer, it was very much the opposite for Ray, especially when he was in the ring, as this killer attitude would come out. It also helped that Sugar Ray also had enough power as a natural welterweight to stop guys at super middleweight. Leonard was a boxer first and foremost using quick hands and beautiful footwork to his advantage, but make no mistake, when the situation called for it, Leonard would turn up the heat to take out his opponent when the opportunity would arise. If you've been following me for a while, you will know I like touching on the mental aspects of boxing and how this can influence a fighter's ability when in the ring. Leonard in fact went through a lot of hardship when he was a young boy as he was sexually abused when he was a child by one of his coaches. Somehow, he managed to grow past this and use his talent and aggression in the ring to achieve his dreams in boxing. I found this great quote from Ray Leonard as he talked about facing this dark and horrible thing and how he changed it into a positive. He said, Every time I stepped in the ring, I had a chip of ice. My brother Roger saw it when we were sparring. I moved towards him and he said, Stop Ray, look at your fucking eyes. You look like you want to kill me. Maybe I used what happened to me outside when I ducked inside the ropes. But it was subconscious. Did I fight so hard because I was distressed by the sexual abuse? Not to my knowledge. Outside, I'm not a confrontational guy. Even if I'm used to talking on TV, I'm actually reserved and quiet, almost shy. But I could be a mean guy in the ring because I felt confident. 
I went through real darkness, but the ring was my light. That was the one place I felt safe. I could control what happened in the ring. My heart turned icy. Although Leonard didn't open up about the sexual abuse he received until later in his life, it's a great lesson for us all. Even going through pain, he was able to push through by focusing on his passion to achieve the dream career, despite this horrible occurrence happening to him. He used this pain as a way to create that eye of the tiger, so to speak, in my opinion. Final thoughts. For me, Sugar Ray Leonard is a fighter that encapsulates to want to watch more of the sport. And that was due to his speed, movement, and somewhat brutal finishing ability. Leonard was in no way the biggest fighter, but his ability to throw his whole body into punches made him one of the most dangerous combination punchers in my opinion. His run at welterweight was of course the prime of his career, and there's no denying that he was at the top during that period. His comeback and victory over Hagler had split people's opinions on him, but you have to give the guy respect for coming back to face one of the most feared men in boxing at the time, despite what you think the result was. If you're someone who has speed and likes to box on the outside and use quick combinations, Leonard is a brilliant example to study. And that wraps up this boxing style now, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that like button, it really helps out the channel. If you're new here, why not subscribe? Make sure to comment below, let me know your thoughts on Sugar Ray Leonard. Is there a specific fight that you enjoy watching? I also recommend you check out my boxing analysis on another king, and that is of course Marvelous Marvin Hagler. As always guys, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.